All right, everyone. Welcome to part two of our best of the 2010s decade. Uh, we just got done doing the best music. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, to check that out if you want. So make sure you check out that. It was part one of the best of, of the decade. Uh, now we are moving to uh, the second part, which would be uh, the best movies of the decade. This is 2010 through 20. How many superhero movies do you have on there? 19, I, we, you'll see what I have if I have anything for that matter. Okay, um, so the best the best uh, movies of the decade, um, and this is 2010 through 2019. Um, the criteria is this: there are no limitations. Uh, you could do whatever movie you want. It could be a Netflix movie. It could be a, a, a motion picture release. It could be anything like that. So uh, it is open season. Um, it just it just had to be a, a, a major release on some uh, format accessible to the public. Uh, all genres are optional. All this stuff like that. So uh, let's get right into it. First of all, uh, a good year, good year for movies or good decade for movies. I think I, I think we really saw technology really take off. Uh, we're like I can't even tell real from fake anymore half the time. It is insane what's happening in in a. Uh, in, in movies, you know what I mean? Like as as far as like special effects go, would you would you would you agree? Yeah, man, really good stuff. Is that how it's gonna be? What? 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 You just gonna try to blow through this? No, nah, man, I'm ready to go. No, this 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 isn't because of the fucking magic, guys, is it? Because you got magic later, no, right? No, what do you know? All right, all right, good. We we take our time. Here we go. I'm taking my time. All right, all right. So uh, I went first. For, for, I mean, first of all, what do you think of the what do you think of all the movies this year? I mean, you've watched a ton. You watch TV, you watch movies, you go to the movies with me all the time. I mean, it's been a good decade, right? Twenty seventeen was fantastic. Really? See, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll get into that. But all right, so I went first for the music. You go first. Uh, no particular order. What? What? Part, this is a particular order. You, Number you, 10. Wait, wait. You you have a particular order? Yeah, my my shit's in order, man. I I don't have a particular order. Uh, I'm 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 I don't have a particular. Number order. ten from twenty seventeen, Baby Driver. Really? You saw it? I did see it. I thought it was fantastic. Like out of all the fucking movies, my tenth favorite movie. Holy shit. I need to know why. What do you mean why? Why? A solid soundtrack. Great acting. I love Edgar Wright. He he creates funny out of shit that shouldn't be funny. The characters were just out of control, like fucking hilarious and amazing. Jamie Foxx was great in it. Yeah? Like, I just I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. So. Alright. Uh, I mean, it was good. I thought it was like Drive on Crack. Sure, it was different. Similar tones to it, though, I thought, you know? Okay, right. Did you like Drive? Is Drive even on we, your we list? We can't talk about Oh, we can't talk about yeah, it. Right. Yeah, so, sorry. sorry, sorry. Uh, Baby ba- Driver from 2017. For 2017. Right, definitely uh, top 10 of the decade. Okay, all right. Don't me wrong. It was hard to find. Uh, all right. Uh, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I had a, I had a, I had an honorable mention here. You had an honorable mention, so I get an honorable, What's mention. Your honorable mention. Okay, so fuck you. I get an honorable mention. My honorable mention is going to be uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, which came out in 2013. Because I think J.J. Abrams did a great job reinventing the Star Trek franchise, and unlike all you other people that thought Into Darkness was a ripoff of Wrath of Khan, I enjoyed it 150. percent Sorry. So here's my real number ten though. Uh, Coco 2017 from Pixar. Um, First of all, I don't. I think Pixar does not make bad movies. I think their worst movie is A Good Dinosaur, and that's still a good movie. Um, I put Coco in there in the top ten because uh, just really heartfelt stuff. And Pixar does a great job at tackling tackling subject matter and giving it a perspective and a very creative perspective that we haven't really. Uh, seen before and Coco really is about death and what happens to you after you die it is it is life after death and of course what what's it called the, the Mexican holiday Dia de los Muertos. can you say that the microphone Dia, Dia de los Muertos. that's day of the dead right yeah and when does that happen hmm? when does that happen when's the day of the dead I have no idea um either way uh 
it, it did a fabulous job at talking about death, the afterlife, and how you exist in the afterlife until nobody in in amongst the living remembers you anymore. And once everybody forgets about you, uh, you disappear from the afterlife as well. And it was a really heartfelt thing. And 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 the twist, the fact that 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 the guy's daughter who was the only one that was remembering him, he was fading because the guy's daughter was actually Miguel's grandmother and she was dying. Like, holy shit, man. Like, Pixar, you have my money, you have my tears. I loved it. Did you like Coco? Coco was fine. Not a top 10 movie, but it was fine. It was a cute little cartoon. It's way better than Baby Driver. No. All right, whatever. What's your number nine? Number nine is Hereditary from 2018. Is that a horror movie? Yes, it is a horror movie. Never saw it. Fantastic horror movie. I'm not a horror fan. I know you're not a horror fan. This movie actually uh, was it was done so well that there were parts where I was a little freaked out. I'm not gonna lie. Really? That hardly ever happened. How many now? Now horror genre has a tendency to do great on the first one, and it does so well that they make a gazillion sequels. They haven't made a sequel to Hereditary, not that I know. Of. Are they going to? I have no idea. Because I know they're on like The Conjuring number ten now or something. No, but Hereditary was really, 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 really Paranormal Activity number eight. Really terrifying, great ending, great twist, all around. Not my best horror movie, but second best. What What year did that come out? Twenty eighteen. And what What's the premise of it? Mm, It's about a family. That's. I'm. I'm, I can't. It's. It's hard to go into without like spoiling the fucking movie. That's not the one with Daniel Craig, is it? No. Oh. No, it's Tony Collette, I think. Uh, Gabriel Burns in it. Okay. All right. Her daughter. Yeah. Her head is is it off. is it gory? A lot of um, gore? There's not a lot of gore, but there's definitely places like when the girl gets beheaded. That was pretty fucking crazy. Okay, yeah, because I don't like gore. That's probably it's why really I don't, that gory. I don't, I don't pretty lean good. towards. So anyways, hereditary. Yeah. Okay. My, uh, uh, my next one is uh, Deadpool, which came out in 2016. Uh Deadpool was amazing. Uh, it was hilarious. It was the action was amazing, uh, and uh, I hate Deadpool the character. I don't like reading his comics. Um, I'm I don't like comedy in my comics. None of that stuff like that. But Deadpool on screen, Ryan Reynolds did a fabulous job at it. Uh, Deadpool one way better than Deadpool two. Deadpool two still is good, but not as good. Deadpool one twenty sixteen. Uh, I liked it. I could still watch it today from any point in the movie and uh, laugh and enjoy it very much. You? Did you like it? What did you think? Uh, I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Not top 10 good. Okay. It was good. It was funny. I, I like you hate Deadpool, so. I, I, I do hate Deadpool, but, but Ryan Reynolds makes me like it. Mm. Yeah. What do you got? Number eight from 2010, True Grit. With fucking Chris Pine? That one? What about uh, the bank robbers? What do you mean? What about the bank robbers? It's no. What do you t- no? It's not. What are you talking about? What? Are, what's True Grit again? Remind me. True Grit is the western. The little girl who wants to avenge the murder of her father, so she gets this drunk ass lawman played by Jeff Bridges to try to hunt down the guy that killed her father. Oh. It's him and the little girl traveling. Sorry, together. I'm, I'm thinking about the other Jeff Bridges movie with Chris Pine. It was directed, which by, was around the same time. I, and Jeff Bridges, all he plays now are fucking like old cowboys. And uh, it was directed by the Cohen brothers, so I had to have them represent on the list because they're one of my favorite directors of all time. Really? Is that the Netflix movie? It's not a Netflix movie, man. True the, Grit. No, Cohen brothers did a Netflix movie recently, though, didn't they? No, no. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. I don't know. Not yeah, they that did. I know. They did. They did. Well, I need to see it. It was like the ballad of about something scandalous. No, that, something that like wasn't that. a Netflix. That was actually in theaters. No, that was a Netflix movie. The Bo Skaggs movie? Something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, True Grit. I'm not a Coen big, Brothers doing a western. Not a big Coen Brothers fan. Really? Why not? I don't Coen know. Brothers, fantastic. Raising did you, Arizona. Did, did you? Oh, that's about it. Hmm? Did were you were you on the Oh Brother Where Out Thou train? Yeah, man, that was fantastic. Really? Yeah. Was John Turturro in this movie? I don't remember. True Grit was a long time ago. Isn't he like in all their movies? He's been in a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like a go-to for those guys. Yeah, The Simple Man. I think they did that was good. Blood Simple was good from the Coen Brothers. Yeah, yeah. At the time, it wasn't just raising Arizona. There was a there was a streak back then of of a few good movies from them. But whatever. All right. Well. Um, okay. Uh, my next one is uh, Inside Out uh, from Pixar. Came out. What What would you want to say? Did they? What was the name of the the one with? Uh, I forget this guy's name. This Javier. Uh, no Country for Old Men. Was that Coen Brothers? 
I'm pretty sure that was Coen I think Brothers. it was, yeah. I think I done fucked up. I put yeah. the wrong Coen Brothers movie. All right, never mind. Wait, I'll wait, stick to True Grit. You're saying No Country for Old Men is better than True Grit? Yeah. You can make a swap if I'll you want. I'll swap it. Okay. No Country for Old Men. Coen Brothers. Because awesome. of Javier Bardem, though? Yeah, and the and the movie was really really smart. It was it was dark. It was dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. He made a he made a he made a pinch hit audible in the in the middle. Uh, my next one is Inside Out. Came out twenty fifteen. Another Pixar movie. Um, damn, everybody's coming early today. It's like an it's like an hour and a half early. Anyways, sorry guys, we're filming right now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, we didn't expect you so early. You just had to deal with our mouths. Ah. <clears throat> So, uh, Inside Out 2015 from Pixar, just like Coco, Inside Out and Pixar, what it does is it explores our minds and our imagination and what makes it, you know, what it is, you know, um, and our emotions. And such a creative way to go about talking about emotions and, 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 and our mind and how it works and how we, you know keep our memories and how we forge our memories and all that stuff like that and again very heartfelt again pixar does a great job at the heartfelt movies and just taking subject matter and really putting a great creative spin on it and what's wrong I'm really sleeping. what do you mean wake up dude go ahead is it because they're i'll make them leave dude because no. you're better when they're not here no man i'm no what do you seriously mean? I'm better when they're here no you're not yeah, I'm no no funny. that last episode we did was way better than this one i'm sleepy now now wake up it's kicking in fuck and why do they keep calling you? Didn't, don't your kids listen to you? Hello? Juancito, stop calling! I'm doing the show, puppy. Let me call you back. Stop calling him! Unless it's an Hello? emergency! <laughs> God. I, do, I have to re, do I have to restate everything I just said? Why are you calling back? <sighs> See, kids? No, I'm fine. Oh, you Thank you. Damn. Because that's not the way that I let people talk to me. What is he, 13? It doesn't matter. God. Cut the leash. <laughs> Anyways, uh, do you even like Pixar movies? Hmm, they're fine. You don't think any of them are top 10 worthy, do you? No, I don't have any Pixar movie. You have on my no list. soul. Do you, yeah, I have plenty of soul. I, I, I'm waiting for the first heartfelt, warm movie. True Grit. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. First of all, you took it out of the list, so it doesn't... Oh. Yeah, anyways... Well, seriously, do, don't you agree though that Pixar does like a really good job at tackling like, int- like like subject matter and putting a creative spin on it? I mean, they're, they're fine. Like, that's it. No, they're, not they're, top, they're fine. They're not top ten, dude. Whatever. Anyways, go on. What do you got? Number seven, twenty seventeen. Awesome year. Get out. Get out. <laughs> it's a horror movie. You don't care. Uh, I don't think it's a horror movie. Did you see it? I did see it. And? I don't when I think well, horror your opinion is way more important than mine on this. When I think horror when I think of horror, I think of gore, I think of I think of scares and stuff like that. And I just how are you doing? I just didn't I just did not get that vibe from from Get Out. I mean, it, it's suspenseful, absolutely. I put Get Out in the same category as I put the ring. And the, I don't think the ring is a horror movie. Okay, I see where you're coming from. But Get Out was really good. It just skyrocketed Jordan Peele to absolutely to fame. Apparently, the it, guy never wanted to do comedy. He was coming off of uh, doing the Key and P show, which was monumentally successful, right? Lot, very high critical success. Uh, yeah. I mean, after yeah. Chappelle show is probably the the highest rated uh, uh, show of all time for 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 that for uh, Comedy Central. Uh, no, no, for that type of uh, what is it? Sketch comedy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and and to go from that, and I guess. Get Out being his directorial debut is crazy for me. Uh, it's like the opposite of everything we've seen him do. Yeah. Right? And then I mean, it, it, it's kind of like, what's his name that did Joker? The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's right. the director for that? The Hangover guy. Yeah, the Hangover. The guy that did the Hangover did the Joker. It's like, whoa. Yeah, so yeah. Get Out is my number seven. Uh, Get Out was good. And yeah, it did catapult Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele could do whatever he wants now. He has a, he, he has been. He has a free ticket to do whatever he wants forever, you know? Uh, and the and the fact that he is a uh, 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 he taps into the diversity as well it, it gives him that extra edge also as well. Um, I have a Man of Steel twenty thirteen that came out. Come come back to me, Juan. Come back. Come back. Go ahead, Man of Steel. Come back. Listen, I get a lot of shit from people in in all this in, in whenever this comes up. I think Man of Steel is one of the best 
superhero movies I've ever seen. Probably my top ten superhero movies ever. Uh, to hands down, the best best take of Superman uh, I've ever seen. We saw Krypton better than ever. I'm a huge Zack Snyder fan and his vision for the DC Expanded Universe. Um, and uh, Man of Steel was just great. The only thing I hated about it was that he let Pa Kent die. I thought that was stupid. I thought that wouldn't be Superman. And I get a lot of shit for Man of Steel because people are like, Superman's so emo. He would never be all dead. Whatever. He was trying to find himself. He was a, he was a, he was a teen, blah, blah, blah. It makes total sense. And uh, I'm behind it 100%. Juan hates that movie. He doesn't think it's good at all, which is why he's rolling in his eyes and practically falling asleep on me. Right? It is terrible. It's not terrible. It's actually terrible. Fuck you. Man of Steel, 2013. What do you got? 2017. John Wick 2. Damn, you were all about 2017. John Wick 2. You put you John go. Wick 2 over John Wick 1? Yeah. Why? For sure. I think up the notch on the action. It was really cool stuff to see. Actually killed the guy with a pencil. A few people. In the bar. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. movie has a soul. There you go. I think John Wick 1 better Wick than 2. John 2. I think John Wick... John Wick 1 for sure is better than John Wick 2. Did you see 3? Yes, I thought 3 was garbage. Was it garbage? Yeah, I thought it was garbage. Okay. I thought I, I think John Wick's a cool franchise. You know, some interesting also happens is like uh the the like rebranding of Keanu Reeves. Oh, he I, You remember how everyone used to make fun of him like his acting and everything and then stories got out over how much he overcome and the type of person he is and now he's like he's, a sensation, right? He's like the Tom Brady of actors. Yeah. But he hasn't like really his acting's not like, you know, I hate to say it because, you know. Yeah, and, and everyone wants to see Keanu Reeves in, like, everything. He's, they he's keep talking. He's not talk a phenomenal actor at all. Yeah, no, at yeah. At all. Like, I yeah. would actually say he's subpar. Yeah. But as a human being, yeah. he's unbelievable, right? Yeah. It's a weird ph phenomenon we see with him. Do you, do you know that Keanu Reeves doesn't, like, do relationships either? Apparently, from what I heard, he was married and stuff like that way back yeah. in the day. His wife or died. Got murdered or something. Something like that. And, and he's, like, anti-relationship. Yeah. Like, he... It does... It's not... He, he dates. He sees women. But, but he he will not be committed like he was ever again. He's lost a lot of people. Yeah. So... But, uh... But, yeah. No, he is... He's, he has been riding a wave ever since John Wick for sure. Uh, he's coming up in the new Matrix movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he's rumored to be new in a Marvel movie. Ted. New Bill and Ted. Uh, so yeah. And then John Wick Four. They're just gonna keep those going, aren't they? Yeah. That makes a lot. They, each one makes more money than the one before it. And they're probably super cheap to make. No. Yeah. Um, my next movie, 2014, uh, Lego Movie. Uh, <laughs> dude, what? What are you gonna say? No, man, nothing. Dude, again, I I don't know if you see an overall theme here, but like. I I really enjoy. Yeah, you're trying to deal with your mortality, man. No, no, no. no it's just they're, they're, it's creative. You're scared you, to die. You, you cannot you cannot deny the creativity behind the Lego Movie. You want to be and, a kid and, again and, because and, as and, a kid, death is super far away from you. Dude, dude, suck a dick right now. Like seriously, the the Lego Movie is genius. Yeah. You you you're really gonna deny the genius no, of the I Lego it was Movie. No, really great. Like. And again, the creativity behind it, the writing behind it, the fact that they took all these intellectual properties and put them together perfectly. Yeah, it's really good. You loved it. You, you were sucking it. the Lego movie's dick when I it came it was, out. I was surprised. You were like, oh, that end scene with Will Ferrell. Oh, my God. I was surprised. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. It was crazy. It's not on your top it ten, though, well, right? No. Baby Driver's better than the Lego movie. Yes. John yes. Wick 2 is better than the oh, Lego for movie. Sure, for fucking sure. <laughs> Whatever, dude. For fucking sure. Whatever. Fuck you. Suck a dick. Lego I Movie know. is amazing. Listen, Lego Movie Two was really good as well. Uh, but but just another spin on on the on the first Lego Movie. Uh, Playmobil Movie came out this past weekend and tanked. By the way. But anyways, go on. What do you got next? So these top five from this decade would probably make a top five all time movie. See, I don't. I, I didn't put this in order at all. But, I did. Okay. All right. These top five are like. So this is like this is like your death the, list. The other ones were like whatever. These are movies you carry with you to the grave. Sure. So my number like five. Like you put up with Scarface. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. Hey. Um. Yeah, Logan. That was my number five movie of 2017. Wow. Wow. Logan didn't make my list. <laughs> Why? I did. Just didn't. So Logan isn't the first. Rated our movie superhero movie. No, Blade is probably right. right. Yeah, right. But Logan did it right. Logan is the most wait, brutal. Wait, wait, wait. Timeout. Blade is great. 
Logan, listen to what I'm saying. Logan is the most brutal and gruesome of the of the rated R movies, superhero movies. More than Deadpool. Yes, dude. Deadpool was for comedic effect. It was still brutal. Yeah, it was for comedy. Okay. This shit was no. I mean, what they, what they did to to Professor X. Yes. Like, yes. What the fuck? Never yes. seen that ever. Never seen Professor X turn into a feeble old man, and even then, yeah, he's still like insanely powerful, right? Yes. Um, Logan just aging him. It's kind of saying our goodbye to Hugh Jackman in a way. Yeah. Like uh, X twenty three was fantastic. They were using mutants that we weren't. We we really don't see in the movies whatsoever. Um, there was just so much about that movie that was great, and in the end, it was a western. Right. It was, yeah. Um, you I, love your I westerns. Saw, I saw it's my f- favorite genre. Yeah. I saw the black and white version. And Did you really? It was really, really good. It was <laughs> okay. better. So, Logan, number five. Uh, you know, I. It's sad when I think about movies like Logan and and Dark Phoenix and all stuff like that because Disney just is not going to give us that. Well, it didn't make your top ten, so it doesn't matter. But still, Disney's not. I don't gonna know give how that doesn't make your top ten. Dude. It just doesn't Logan make your top ten. I will tell you something. I believe that Logan is the best superhero movie of all time. Dude, uh, listen. Uh, every movie that I've mentioned so far, I've seen more than once. I've only seen Logan once, and that was in the theater with you. Oof. Yeah. Watch it again. I know. I know. So, all right. My next one is uh, Edge of Tomorrow 2014 came out. You can't argue that. You can't argue that fucking shit, can you? Because that movie's fucking... First of all, Tom Cruise doesn't make bad movies. As bad as The Mummy was, it was watchable. Okay? Listen. Listen. Edge of Tomorrow is so underrated guys that movie is is money that movie's great uh and uh came out in 2014 it's basically groundhog day in a science fiction world with mechs and and tom cruise is a star with cape is it cape blanchett no it's 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 what's his name it's 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 the guy from the office it's his wife what's her name i don't know whatever anyways friggin great edge of tomorrow is amazing I didn't see that with you, by the way. I don't know who you saw that shit with. But but that shit, ah. Oh. Tom Cruise, hands down, Edge of Tomorrow, great, 2014. Uh, what do you got? My number four I, movie. By the way, I just want to say real quick before you go, I'm glad I shut you up for once there. All my other movies, you're like, ugh. It was, it was, but it you, was, had, you had nothing to say good. about that one. It was good. It's not my top ten, but it's good. Whatever, go on. Uh, my number four, you, you probably didn't watch. It's from 2011. It's called Take Shelter. I don't even know what that is. So Take Shelter is um, is a really interesting movie because there was also a controversy around the movie at the time. Um, it, it's basically this guy starts having visions of the apocalypse. He lives in Ohio and he starts building an underground bunker because he's believed it's going to save his family. But it shows the repercussions. He becomes obsessed with, with, with this bunker and it starts isolating the people around him, including his family. And, and people start believing that he has schizophrenia. And it's, it's basically it's great because it shows, you know, how hard it is to deal with someone with a mental disorder. Right. And then at the very end of the movie, in the last like second, like off a reflection, you see the apocalypse coming. <laughs> so it was fantastic. Great fucking movie. That sounds just like 10 Cloverfield Lane. Um, no, but this was well done. But sim- it wasn't an alien invasion. No, but so the, similar, the, the right? The whole argument is everyone's like, listen, you made a movie about a mental disorder, like the best movie ever portraying schizophrenia. And then at the end of the movie, they're like, surprise, the guy was a fucking prophet. 10 Cloverfield Lane. And the family dies, by the way. So in the apocalypse, it's always like rain and stuff. Yeah. So that's also why they thought he was crazy because, you know, he lives in Ohio. Yeah. And then they went, they went, they, they needed to get away. And they went to a place where the beach and you know, fantastic. That is Ten Cloverfield Lane, to, though, right? That, that that is Ten Cloverfield Lane, though. No, Ten right? Cloverfield Lane is a the, was, guy builds a bunker under alien invasion. No, because that's happening. They say it's bullshit. That happens but then it in turns the world. Out to be real. No, it happens in the world of Cloverfield, which is a great world, by the so way. So it makes sense that there's a bunker because there's an actual alien invasion. No, no, we they didn't know that. And it wasn't to the end. And at the end, it's an alien invasion. It is at the end. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, but like take oh. shelter, but take shelter is a different tone. It isn't. It is kind of sci-fi because of the end. But it's really good. You should check it out. Okay, take, take shelter. shelter 2011. You said right. Yeah, man, Mike Shannon. Um, uh, my next one is uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens 2015. I know, I know, I know. Here's why. First of all, The Force Awakens is in my top three Star Wars movies ever. Okay, uh, uh people gave The Force Awakens a lot of shit. Because they said it was a new hope chewed up and spit out again. It was. But 
I love The Force Awakens, first of all. I think J.J., just like Star Trek, did a great job at bringing the Star Wars universe back. The, the reason why I love this movie is because he made me not give a fuck about Luke, Leia, Han, and Chewie. He made me actually care about Rey, Poe, Kylo, Finn. For the first time, he created new characters that I wanted to see more of, and I wanted to hear their stories more than I wanted to hear Luke's story. And to do that in Star Wars is not easy. I mean, you know? apparently is because of Mandalorian and Rogue One. Rogue One is not as good as Force Awakens. Rogue One is better than Force Awakens. No, it's not. No, it's Oof. not. Force Awakens is 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 it, a, is top three Star Wars movies a ever. New Hope. No, A New Hope is at the bottom, asshole. Whatever. All right. Uh, uh, Force Awakens, I think that, that was great. 2015. What do you got? From 2015, the far superior movie and shows how you fucking... You know, do a classic was Mad Max Fury Road. Ah, uh, really? Mad Max Fury Road. What, what's the problem with Fury Road, dude? Go, uh, go. I mean, it was just it was just a big chase, action chase the whole yeah. time. An yeah. action chase, yeah. Okay. Tom Hardy's awesome. Didn't talk much. Charlie Theron was awesome. Didn't talk much. Old school type action, no like CGI. Dude, that movie that was good. I, I like the fact that it was old awesome. school action. The action. Yeah. It was one long chase scene. But the yeah. action was undeniable. The cinematography, everything about that movie was fantastic. The bad guy, like, dude, the characters in that movie felt like they were out of uh, Mad Max. Yes, great, but I don't think, I don't think the best top ten of the decade. Oh, it's one of my top ten movies of all time. Uh. You ready? Are you all set? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. We're gonna take a pause so we can ring up a sale, guys. Yeah, anyway, so uh, Mad Max, we're back, guys. Mad Max Fury Road 2015, was that? Yeah, you're going to hate my I, Look, one, I, I, think the, I think the action was great in that movie. I just don't think I just don't think it's top ten of the decade. Like, out of all the movies that came out this past decade. Dude, top ten in my life. That's fucking insane, dude. That's ins- Thank you, John. That's insane. No. You've, lo- you've lost your fucking mind. No, no. Anyways, all right, so... No, I'm not gonna see that communist piece of shit uh, movie. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see the Irishman. Anyways, all right. So my next one is Captain America: The Winter Soldier, <laughs> which came out in 2014. Uh, this is my only Marvel movie from the from Marvel Studios on my list. I will say that right now, uh, because uh, out of all the movies that came out in 2010 and the 2010s, this is the only one worthy of that. Uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. Phenomenal comic book movie from the MCU, and uh, just espionage, a spy movie, just really good, really good. And uh, I don't necessarily like the direction they're going, but I'm still behind it. But uh, Winter Soldier, hands down, my favorite MCU movie, and on my top ten of 20, the 2010s. I mean, you agree, Winter Soldier? I great. think it's great. I think after Logan, it's the best superhero movie that we saw up there. Uh, I uh, cap. It almost made my list. That it was a hard to cut off that and uh, Spider uh, Spider Verse. Um, those two almost made my list. Captain America, yeah, definitely, definitely the best out of uh, Marvel. I thought of Spider Verse, and the reason why I cut it out was because I don't like female Doc Ock. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Post Malone. He's making, all the, He's Ooh, making all, the so He's making all the money. He's making all the money. He's making all the money. No, I agree with you. I'm, I have no, nothing, nothing to say bad about that movie. It was no, fantastic. Yeah, Winter Soldier. No, hands, it hands really down. works is because it, it could work without the superheroes. It's just a really good thriller. Yeah. And they just <clears> add <throat> superhero elements to the thriller, which is what makes it more than than some of the other shit that Marvel's been pumping out. And there, there's no powers really either. You no, know, I mean, yeah. there, there's fights, and we all know Captain America's strong. Right. But there's no like actual like. Powers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, it's just yeah, it's it's like James Bond on crack. It's really good. Number two, from 2011, Drive. <laughs> so it was on your list. <laughs> Drive has one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. It's got Kavinsky's on yeah. that. Yeah. College. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite soundtracks of all yeah. time. Okay. And at the end of the day, that movie is a western. It's the man with no name. Um, it's modernized. Listen, true story. So, I I went to I went to watch Drive. Okay, uh, I was watching it. I rented it, and uh, 
because I heard it was good, and I knew Ryan Gosling was in it, and he was it was about a driver. And I thought it was going to be like Gone in 60 Seconds. And I love Gone in 60 Seconds because I love cars. I like cars. I like car chases and stuff like that. And I thought Boy. that's what it was going to be. I watched Drive, and it was nothing like Gone in 60 Seconds, No, guys. it was not. Nothing. It was actually completely depressing and dark. Yes. Um, and the way it ended, like, everyone dies pretty much. Like, what the fuck? Um, spoilers. Uh, so... It gets better, though. So after I was done watching it, I'm like, I want to watch something light. So I go through the movies, and I end up, I, I, I come across Red State, uh, which was written and directed by Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, that was and, a crazy and, fucking and, movie. And I'm like, oh, I love Kevin Smith. He does funny movies. Yeah, no, you know? that wasn't funny so at all. I, after watching Drive, I wanted a funny movie. I put on Red State. That movie was not funny at all. <laughs> at <laughs> all, know? yeah. Really good, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, really, really good. The guy that, that played the preacher was that movie awesome. Is insane. Like, like Kevin Smith did a fabulous job in that movie. Um, but uh, yeah, so, yeah, that, so that, drive. That, that's my drive story. All right, there Dr- you go. Drive is good. Drive is good. It, that that is definitely one of my favorite movies of all time. I can't. Be- I can't top ten ever of of, of 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 like of your ever. Well, you got to understand, like, dude, I love the I I love genre movies, and this was like. It was perfect, man. Wow, that's so fucking crazy. Go ahead. No, the number one's going to drive you insane. You're going to get so mad. Go All ahead. Right. Uh, I have Interstellar 2014. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, uh, which was, uh, what's the director's name? Dark Knight? Yeah, Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan. It, it, it was, I think it was his first movie after the Dark Knight trilogy that came out. Are you sure? It wasn't Inception? It was Inception. You're absolutely and right. And how is Inception not on there instead of Interstellar? I like Interstellar better. Is that great? I haven't seen it. It's with Matthew McConaughey, It's with right? Matthew McConaughey. And and what's her I name? I can't believe that was 2014. I've been meaning to watch that movie for five years, and I just don't get around to it. Time I know. Fly- Dude, I'm dying. Time flies. And you want to know what makes Interstellar? John, we're dying. Interstellar, first of all, it's science fiction to the max. It's about time travel. It's yeah. about time. It's about relative. It's about the theory of relativity. Like, like there have been interviews with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and other physicists and astrophysicists talking about the science of the movie Interstellar and if it checks out because Hollywood does a great job at botching the science yeah. and making up their own science. And they say, like for the most part, it's dead on, you know. And it's it's just crazy like there's this one scene where they're on this planet and they talk about gravity and they're like for every minute that you stay on this planet seven years will go by on earth you know and and it's a race to get back home because there's this huge epidemic happening on earth and they're looking for a new planet to live Mm -hmm. you know and uh in doing so and trying to find that uh they encounter black holes and gravity and all this other crazy stuff and and you know he leaves his daughter a fucking child still and 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 by the time just the course of the movie just it's it's about time the movie is about time really at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and 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 how time really affects life not just on earth but around the whole universe it's a fabulous movie the soundtrack by hans zimmer is amazing as well uh and uh Fucking great movie. Yeah, I, I, I love Interstellar. It it I, haven't seen it. I love Interstellar. You gotta watch it. I'm going to. Okay. My number one movie of the decade. Of your life, right? This is like this is, you said your top five. These are your top five that you would yeah. carry with you for life. Yeah, I would I would I would definitely put this movie wait, in. Wait, wait, wait. I, I gotta guess. I gotta guess. I gotta guess. Just have we seen it together? Wait, why no, I can't tell you that. Why? Why do you need I, to know? Can you give me a hint? Let me see how well I know you. It's twenty seventeen. So it's recent. Yeah. Then we we saw it together. Yeah. I don't know, dude. You do know. Once I say it, you're going to know. Like, you do know. In your heart, you know. Listen, I'm not going to blame you for not saying it because you definitely know that this is my number one movie of the decade. Captain Marvel. No, I'm kidding. Because of how much <laughs> you not. Okay. I'll give you. I'll, this will put it away. Uh, no, wait. No, let me not say that. Listen. Just, just other t- people hated it. Other people hated it. That one with Did I hate it? I don't know. We'll see. Blade Runner 2049. Stop! Oh, my God. I hated it. Oh, God. That's right. How did I forget that one? Oh, I know how I forgot it because it sucked. Oh, God. Oh, Um, my God. I will say this about Blade Runner 2049. I believe it's better than the original. Oh, that's even worse. Listen. Visually amazing. The sound design, amazing. Everything else, garbage. No, the story was fantastic. 
God damn, I can't believe you said Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049, in my opinion, is better than Blade Runner. I can't believe I can't believe that's I can't believe you think that's the number one movie of the decade. Of the decade. Of the decade. Out of every movie that came out in the last ten years, you put Blade Runner 2049 number Uh, one. Yeah, absolutely. And you put that movie on like your top ten movies you've ever seen in your entire life. In my entire life. You've lost your fucking mind, dude. No, it's fucking fantastic. Whatever. And I will tell you this: for those of you that have, didn't see it in the theater, you missed out. That's an experience that it is. I, I do agree with that. As, I do as, agree with that. As a theater Absolutely. experience, yes. I have never. I agree. I agree. Heard a movie that sounded as good as Blade no, it Runner sounded did. amazing, and it looked great. Um, it looked and sounded great. And um, and I actually liked the story, dude. The the whole thing with his computer AI that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah no, it was good. Man. And all I, right, and all the questions that it posed. There's like so many philosophical questions that it posed. It's so good. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead with your number one. Uh, again, no particular order. It's just the last one on the list. But uh, I went with uh, The Big Short, which came out in 2015. Um, have you seen The Big Short? Nope. Are you, like, protesting The Big Short because it's about the housing crisis? Oh, I didn't know that's what it was about. Now I'm definitely not going to see it. <laughs> no, it's it's a great movie. It's with, it's with Christian Bale, Steve Carell, um... A uh, bunch of other guys are in it. Uh, it's it's the same guy that did uh, did it's the same guy that did Vice, actually. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't care for Vice. I just like the song. Okay. Well, a- anyways, uh, great movie. Really gets you. I you almost have to watch it a couple times because they get down into the nitty gritty details about how shit got so fucked up. Do they talk about Barney Frank? They talk about everything. But Barney Frank in I, particular. I think they might. I because don't... let me tell you, I blame Barney Frank completely for the housing crisis. Because the Dodd-Frank? What? The Dodd-Frank thing? Yeah. Okay. And because the problem is that you do understand that they were going to address the housing crisis and that Barney Frank, along with a couple others from, and he was on the committee, like strong-armed them and basically said, if you try to do this, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cause something to happen. We'll talk about it off camera. All right, all right, well, it's com- well, it's political and it's bullshit. What happened with that housing crisis? Well, I'm talking about the movie, the yeah, Big whatever. Short, the it's movie. Christian Bale, he's that, fantastic. That is there for our entertainment and also this movie is an informative movie. Great movie. The Big Short is phenomenal. It's just fascinating. It's like watching an entertainment style documentary because it's just so good. The acting that's being done is phenomenal. You need to watch this movie, dude. Nah, man, I don't. You I don't. I don't like watch, political you, propaganda, dude, dude. It's not political propaganda, dude. It's not. It, it, it's. It, it is so good, dude. Watch. Watch the Big Short. Hello, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Watch the Big Short. Watch Interstellar. Both of those movies are are fabulous movies. Big Short, guys, like fabulous movie. What What are you looking at? The Big Short. Yeah. So. Most of Juan's movies came from the year 2017. He said that was a great year. Most of my movies came from uh, 2013 through 2015. Most of them 2015, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's been a lackluster couple of years in the past couple of years. Uh, now, to be fair, it is December 9th today, 2019, when we're filming this. We have not seen the the Rise of Skywalker yet. Um, but, you know, the chances of that coming on the list over everything that either of us has said, slim, right? Neither of us have seen The Irishman either yet. Uh, but either way, uh, so there we are, guys. Uh, 2010s. This is part two of our uh, best of the 2010s decade. Uh, follow us on YouTube.com, forward slash Cork Comics. Like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you think, what movies you like this decade. Uh, and uh, for Tom Pop, Feature Fat Man, Little Boy, I'm Steven. Blade Runner is awesome. Fuck you. Later.